My name is Patrick Doerr. Uh, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I came from a community that uh, was considered or is considered uh, financially disadvantaged, uh, disenfranchised, a uh, community of uh, predominantly African American, Caribbean American, and Latino American, uh, Puerto Rican in, in particular. Um, I, I grew up uh, during a time in the city where there was a lot of blight. Um, my neighborhood was considered, you know, it's an outdated term, but it was considered the ghetto. Um, it was grimy and dirty and everything that you associate with, with uh, the ghetto. There was um, burnt out houses and vacant lots. Um, it was, uh, it was a different time in the city. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was definitely a, uh, a rough environment to grow up in. Um, and that environment impacted my work in the sense that I think, um, I learned early on, even before I recognized that, uh, I had a leaning toward being an artist. I think I learned early on to see beauty in my environment, in things that aren't necessarily comp considered beautiful. You know, um, I always appreciated rusty metal, uh, you know, rusted out cars. I always thought they were really interesting. Um, things that were discarded, um, trash, really. Uh, I found beauty in, in you know, in, even in the vandalism. Um, uh, and I think that that recognition early on to see beauty in your environment in places where it isn't uh, gener generally seen or appreciated, I think that still affects my work. Um, what challenges I faced growing up in, uh, in my neighborhood at that time? Well, you know, as I said, it was a poor neighborhood. It was a poor and working class neighborhood. Uh, there was a lot of social unrest. Um, you know, this was a time when there were a lot of gangs in, in the city. I also grew up, you know, during the mid to, uh, I guess even early to late seventies, there was a drug epidemic, a heroin epidemic in particular. It was always a lot of alcoholism. And then, you know, in the eighties, it was the crack epidemic. So there was a lot of crime, um, a lot going on. I learned uh, how to walk the streets wisely, uh, with caution, and um, you know, and and uh, how to maneuver and survive. Uh, uh, what was one of the greatest inspirations and influences of my work? Well, you know, um, growing up in New York, uh, coming up and coming of age in the late seventies. In the early 80s, I, I came of age at the same time as some of the greatest cultural movements, you know, um, hip hop, um, punk rock, roots, reggae. Uh, those movements really had their uh, genesis at the same time that I was growing up. And, um, and there's, there's a, a theme or there's a, there's a, underlying uh, culture in, in all of those movements, you know, punk rock, hip hop, roots reggae, there's a uh, rebellion, uh, critical thinking, a pushing back on society, a questioning of society. There's a do it yourself understanding and aesthetic. There's a, you know, all of those movements, besides being uh, innovative musically, they came with with art and with fashion, with uh, new languages, you know, new ways of, of flipping English. Um, and so those aesthetics, that, that do-it-yourself, that rebellion, uh, I think has affected my whole outlook on life, but definitely also affected my work. And then, you know, in conjunction with those movements, 
um, I was also always interested in spirituality. So on my own, I was always uh, looking at um, different religions and different um, ways of expression, expressing spirituality. And I think so the combination of an interest in spirituality and, and, and then the, the rebellion of hip hop and punk rock and roots reggae, um, and the appreciation of culture, um, those combined to influence my life and my work. And there's really no difference between my life and my work. Um, how would I describe black neighborhoods in terms of the social environment? Black neighborhoods, uh, I still live in a black neighborhood. I've always lived in, in black neighborhoods. Uh, even in the midst of change and gentrification in, in the city, uh, black neighborhoods are vibrant. There's a rhythm. There's a style. There's a way of communicating. There's an energy. There's a creativity, you know, uh, that come out of black communities. Um, there's a joy, you know. There's music on the streets. There are people out, you know, hanging out. Uh, the, that sense of community, um, that sense of uh, excitement in what's happening around you. Um, there's characters, you know, <laughs> there's humor. There's, there's so much to be said about um, black neighborhoods. And there's so much that influences the whole world that comes out of black neighborhoods. So much culture, um, style, ways of flipping the language, um, uh, music, dance, everything that... Um, originates in, in black neighborhoods and black communities. It's probably why I still uh, and would always want to live in a black neighborhood and black community. Uh, and then the last question is, how did the environment affect your aesthetic and creative output? Well, I think I've probably answered uh, that already, but, um, you know, I would add only that there is a, a part of black culture and black communities that's very important and that is cool being being cool having style having swag not being corny you know uh, and having grown up that way i think it affects how i present but it also present, uh, affects my work i think i'm always consciously or unconsciously thinking you know is this cool is this uh, is this corny is this, you know, innovative? Is this something that is going to make people think like, yeah, man, that's 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 kind of fly, you know? Um, and I think that, again, I think that's always going to affect how I create, what I create, and, and really how I, you know, how I show up. Um, so uh, thank you for including me in this uh, presentation. And I hope, um, you know, I hope I was able to add to the conversation. Thank you. Peace.